Hey guys, thank you for watching. Welcome once again to another of my small tutorials. Today I will be going through automotive rendering using an HDRI and a backplate. Um, I know if you can go into, uh, you can go to, for example, Duron Auto Automotive. Here we go. Um, this guy sells some really nice HDRIs with backplates, uh, which I've been playing with, and they are great. So if you want to try some different things, you can buy these from him. can really recommend them. However, uh, I got myself some new gear to, f uh, to shoot my own HDRIs. So this video actually comes out of me uh, trying these out. So here is the HDRI that we shot it's me and martin we uh we went for a little ride a day uh, one day and just shot a different you know uh it drives from different uh, uh like places so here's the result of that you can see some really nice dynamic range um and also we shot some back plates so you can see here uh not the greatest ones these are not great in any way these would not fit for some kind of commercial <laughs> cool rendering but it's it's only for testing but i will be using these because the reason to you know the reason why i want to use these is because i can share them with you so i'll do that and i will and i will add my car into this picture here um so and if i go to here we have this bmv model bmw model uh which i will be using um the Shader is really simple. I can pick it here and I'm not really sure if this is I can't remember if this is uh, Actually based on Jeff Patton's material uh, a shader or if I just actually uh, made my own version of it but um, Just to explain it a little bit here. We have a base material white with a um, gloss material uh, uh, gloss reflections um, and on top of that we have a clear coat which looks like this and it has some kind of mixes with um, with some dirt and these are the maps are from Jeff Patton I actually do think that I made this shader myself um, but I used his uh, dirt but um, anyway you can go to Jeff Patton's website you can download some f-storm paint like car paint shaders from him and that way you will also get some some really nice bump maps and flake maps and, and dirt maps and these are from there so i can recommend that if you don't want to do your own shader anyway it was a while ago i made this um so anyway uh let's move on also i want to just mention that i uh if you uh think this look weird I actually, I'm actually working on a laptop right now, and I can just share some information about that. I bought a Razer Blade 17 Pro, or a Pro 17, um, which has the RTX 2080 Max Q design built in, and I also got eGPU enclosure, which now holds a RTX 2080 Ti. And as you can see, when having that eGPU connected I can actually use both of them I thought that I would only be able to use the eGPU but I can actually render with both the eGPU and the internal GPU at the same time and the funny thing is this in the Storm benchmark scene um, this setup here with the laptop and the eGPU is only like a couple of percent slower than my workstation which has uh, two RTX 2080 it only differed five seconds in the Astron benchmark scene, which is pretty nice. So I, I kind of like this setup. Um, if you would want to go um, like working mobile, like completely mobile, this seemed to be a really good setup. And if you're interested, I can talk more about it if you want to. But for now, let's leave it and move on with this HDRI um, automotive rendering. First, what I want to do, let's reset. Yes. All right, so what we want to do, I want to, um, actually we can just paste the car in here. So this is an empty scene, completely empty. And I will do everything from scratch, except the car, that is. But uh, also, uh, speaking of that, um, I did start recording a video, uh, you know, this uh, the warehouse renders, which I had this car in as well. Um, however, I didn't get pleased with it and then I started working with it without recording and then I got pleased with it so I had to redo that um, but I will make a video going through all the shading and stuff as well uh, so here we have the car 
I will actually, for the simplicity of it, I will just um, base a pivot. I will make a sphere here and I'll just hide the car for now because it's just easier that way. All right, so here we have a sphere. I will create a shader for this, which is just a mirror material. So full reflection, I don't know, 10 or whatever. Here we have a mirror material. All right. And uh, let's start with, because I, I know what backplate I want to use. I want to use this one. And so let's start with setting the dimensions for this. I'll just actually just move that into the other screen. And um, here we go. So uh, this is 9703 by 7278. And I do not want to render that big, so I can just lower it. So 900 by 645. Um, I kind of could have done that math in my head. Anyway, um, so let's start the RT. And now what I want to do is to add, because FStorm has this background feature in the RTs, you can add backgrounds here without, because if you add the backgrounds here in the environment, you can add it here into alpha environment. If you do that, it'll get its own multiplier and it'll be rendered, uh, which means that the image will not look the same as it does in Windows, like for example. So, but if you add it here, it'll look identical. It will not you know, be affected by any exposure or lighting or any way or tone mapping for that matter. So that's what we will do. So close. And now what I want to do to make that work is you have to check the process alpha. So there we go. Now you can see that the image looks exactly the same here as in here, regardless of what kind of uh, multiplier or tone mapping I have. Right. So what I want to do now, I want to make a plane. What we can do actually, let's add it. Let's add the uh, the file here as well. The background, so we can have it in the viewport background. Just a little bit easier to set the uh, perspective then. So here we got it. I can just pause this rendering for now. We don't need that. So here we have a pretty decent scene set up already. Let's make a plane here. Voila, like that. Whoa. And let's make a camera. We can use the standard like physical camera actually. Like that. And then I want to set this to 35 millimeters because that's what we use to shoot. Now, if I move this around, the uh, the target is way messed up. I can actually remove the target, it doesn't really matter. So if I go to perspective, and I'll just set the... Oh, okay. Let's just select that one. And like, ah, oh, Jesus. You know, max 2020 and perspective modes, like viewport, navigation is a fucking mess. Okay, so let's go back here and then go back here, control C. Now we have this view set. Um, I kind of do want to have the target. Where is the target anyway? It's fucked up. Okay, thank you 3ds Max, thank you. You nailed it perfectly. Of course, I want to have the target like five kilometers away. Wasn't that obvious? All right, so now the target, now we can actually navigate. Wow, wonderful, thank you. All right, so I do like 3ds Max. All right, so we have a plane. So this will be our shadow catcher. So let's just start with um, updating this. We have no lighting, so let's make some lighting. I will just drag the HDRI in here. So what I'm gonna do now, I have, this is a bitmap because I just drag and dropped it, but I have a plugin 
from Paul Haas called Easy Mat. You can download that, uh, like, I don't know, his Gumroad, I think. Um, I, bound, I have bound that, so if I hit Shift A, it'll just convert this map to an F-Storm bitmap without, you know, no questions asked. I like that. So um, I want to change the mapping to spherical environment, really important. Gamma 2.2, really important. Um, and now let's add it into the environment slot like that and we should be getting some lighting and we do there's a little sun there what we can do now though increase the environment strength um, you know sometimes I get the question like do you change the exposure or do you change the multiplier doesn't matter all right doesn't matter um, what I do want to do though is to uh, I want to disable process alpha like that and now I want to rotate this to kind of match the scene like that and just enable process alpha again so it kind of looks good but using this sphere won't really help us very much anymore actually it didn't help us at all but So what it helped us with really having the sphere, it's just a little bit easier to match the strength of the light with the uh, with the background. And as you can tell right now, our light is actually a bit too bright. The HDR is a bit too bright because it's it's uh, the reflections of the buildings are lighter than it is in the in the backplate. We had to fix that. So here we have a car. And I'll just have to lower the exposure a little bit. So that looks a bit better, I think. So what we want to do as well is to go to environment lighting here and enable direct lighting so we get some actual sunlight. Then I want to rotate this a little bit more. So that looks pretty good. Now you can see already uh, the reflections here kind of matches up pretty well it's it's a tilted class so you can't really tell if it matches up or not but it looks good i think it looks uh, convincing now what i'm going to do is to add a material here f storm apply that to our plane and uh, enable matte so now you can see we have some shadows it kind of looks Good, the car is way too big though. So we have to do something about that. That looks a little bit more convincing maybe. Now actually, we we left the tripod here in the images so we could use that as some kind of a scale reference. I'm just too lazy and I can't remember the measurements. So I'll just do it this way. Let's say this works. Um, I won't be too picky. You, you can spend the time doing this if you want to. Now what I want to do, because one issue we have is that the reflection of the car does not match the ground it stands on. You can tell it's it's uh, it, it doesn't match. So what we can do is to, um, let's disable matte here for now. And we can add the back plate as a texture onto the ground. Let's preview that, which looks like crap. But we can do, well, first of all, we have to have a bunch of segments, otherwise it won't work very well. So we can do that. And now let's add a camera map modifier. Now you have a world space modifier and you have an ordinary modifier. I don't really know which one is best. I'll use the normal one. And then you want to pick a camera. This is why you need a camera. So pick a camera and now you can tell it actually mapped the texture or the backplate onto this plane. So now you actually have the proper stones 
underneath the car, which means that we will be able to get uh, correct reflections. So there we go. Kind of looks like crap still, but you can tell that the reflections are accurate. Um, all right, so let's move on. What do we do now? So we have the, an issue we are having right now is that if I now enable matte function here, you will see it'll lose the reflections again. Also, before we do anything about that, I just want to extend this. So we lose the reflections if we're doing that. So what we can do about that is to, um, we can add a uh, override material, apply that to our plane. Voila, like that. And now we can add this as a base. We can make a copy of it. We can enable the mat to the base because we want to have the base as a mat object. And we can add this one to the reflection slot. And now you can tell we get the proper reflections, but still we get the proper alpha as well, or the mat. I don't know what happens if we actually go in here and enable mat here. Yeah, that kind of overrides it. So you don't want to do that. So this looks, this looks pretty good. All right, so let's figure out the issues. So first of all, if we go into alpha environment here, you can see that we can actually see the, um, the alpha plane, which is a problem because it's just too dark. Uh, and it, to solve that, if my, oh, I saw the saving again. So to solve that issue, it's actually really simple, but it might not be very obvious is if we, uh, you can see now, you can see, you can see pretty clearly. Um, if you change light samples, that's the issue. So if I change that to 16 and voila, the matte plane is gone. So now, even if I hide this, it won't make the, the, uh, area here darker. See, so nothing happened to the ground, All right? So another thing I want to do is I want to remove the contrast here and you know, maybe I want to play with that a little bit. I want to add a lookup table uh, and whatever lookup table you want to use, I don't really care. Um, you can use the one that I shared here on Patreon before. doesn't matter. They kind of do the same thing. And I just want to bring down the exposure. I did play a little bit with the values here. So if you, um, because I paused the video before. So if you um, wonder what, what happened with the values, I did play with that. So anyway, I do think that we are pretty much spot on here. Um, the reflections of the ground is looking good. Maybe a little bit too dark though, because you kind of have um, some lightness there. Whoops, sorry, let's try to, oops, figure that out. Uh, if we can, cause I can't add emission to the mat here because then we will mess up the shadows, which we don't want to do, but I think I can add it to the reflection plane here. I can. So now you can see that we actually got reflections looking a little bit more like the real ones. Not really sure what's happening there though. It's, I think it's just the reflections of the, uh, I mean the uh, curvature of the car. So anyway, one thing I'm noticing as well is that I'm actually missing a number plate. All right, no more missing textures. Now we have a number plate as well. Um, so what I'm thinking right now is we still have an issue and that is that the tires here should be, they should be pretty black down there, which they're not. And I don't really know why. Um, is it because my tires are, no, it must have something to do with this matte object. So, come on fucking windows shit 
because if I turn the mat off, okay, kind of still. Okay, yeah, my tires are pretty, uh, pretty bright. What happens if I do like this? Yeah, okay. Actually, I'm not sure exactly what I would do about that. Um, because it shouldn't look like that. Okay, it has to do with my tone mapping. All right, so that looks a lot better. Now we have some darkness there. Um, yeah, I think we're actually onto something. This is uh, this is looking nice. So, one thing I would probably want to do because I think that uh, rims. <laughs> Fuck Windows Ten. I think the rims are a bit too dark, so I kind of want to liven them up a little bit if I can, if that's a way to say it. Lighten them up a little bit. Yeah, that looks a bit more interesting, more chrome like. All right, so now if we uh, would go to, let's say we would just turn this off. This looks nice. I do want to fine tune the camera angle a little bit. Actually, I think this looks good. Don't you think? And the angles of the shadows look pretty much correct as well. One thing I could do. Now, I'm going to be really picky. Uh, way more than I actually need to, but we can do it just for the sake of it. If I add a sphere here, and I will add, um, I will add back my mirror material, which I don't seem to have here anywhere. <sighs> mirror mirror on the wall because now this may look good to the eye but if you would compare we do have some issues and one of them is being that I think the lightness is pretty much you know it looks pretty good you know uh, the, the lightness of the wall here compared to the walls of the back plate looks pretty good. However, the um, uh, the white balance is off. You can really tell it here because the car is white, but when you look at it like this, you can see that the, uh, the wall in the reflection is way more red than in the real life. I, probably I could, um, let's see, I could probably add a, we can try, add a color correction to come on here and then we add the color correction there and then we try playing with this value yes look at that so we could actually by doing that, because when we change the white balance, we change the balance of the whole image, including all the materials, all the shaders that we have, which is not really what we want to do here. We want to change only the the uh, the HDRI because the HDRI, even though it is shot with the same temperature as the background, uh, it doesn't match perfectly. So what we can do here just adding a little slight hue correction to the HDRI, you can see now it's it's kind of the same yellow and not red anymore. So I think we can, uh, I think that's just good enough. I think it kind of looks good. 
Um, maybe I want to remove that again. Hmm. Anyway, the average person would not be able to tell that this is not a photo. Uh, the car is not there. However, I think this the car still feels a bit big. Not sure. Anyway, so now let's render this out in like, what did I say? 9,000 something something. 97.03 by 72.78. Also, let's see if my nodes are available. They are. Connect. Refresh. I mean, this is so simple to render, so we probably wouldn't need to have the uh, network nodes at all. But, you know, if it can go a little bit faster, why not? Something is weird here, though. Oh, no, okay. So, okay, so there's actually a crease. Yeah, there's a crease in the model there. That's why the reflection looks weird. All right, so I did some changes while not recording. Um, I... First of all, I got a lot of fireflies, so I had to change the glossy preser preserve to 0 0.1, which works perfectly fine for this case. Uh, also, I decided not to render it in 9,000 pixels because I just I thought that if I render it full size and then downscale, it'll look better. I kind of figured that it's probably not worth it. Also, I did adjust the um, uh, the white balance a little bit, just just a notch, and also the angle a little bit. So because I thought the the car was closer to here before, and I just wanted a little bit further away. So that's what I've been doing, and this is according to me finished rendering. So I will pause this now, and I will save the image, and I'll save it like here one dot. PNG and while you're doing this the um, the backplate will not be saved because this is oh sorry this is not baked into the image at all so you will you will still only only sorry I got a hiccup you will only save the um, like the actual render data and not the background um, so if I can now just figure this uh, just gonna find the folder here it is so here, here we've got the rendered image. So now if I open Photoshop and I have this image here, so this is the original default image. Also, I want to open our render. And I did render this in 6,000 by 4,500. So let's change this one to 6,000 by 4,500. And let's just, uh, Uh, move tool. Just move the layer, hold shift, drop it into the this document here, and you can see this looks awesome. Something I want to do though, I want to add a curve. I want to lower this just a little bit, and I want to apply it to only the render layer. And I want to run. I want to paint because since we actually added some illumination to the reflection plane you can see that the reflection here does not really reflect the shadow uh, and that's because of that so what I want to do is just to darken this a little bit so it's not as apparent also we can do just a little bit drag down the opacity just a notch and just paint in some shadows here. Now, we have light on the back of the car because you can see, you can actually see there is some buildings here that is catching the sunlight and casting that back. So that's why I actually have light from the back. I do think it looks a little bit weird. I think it's a little bit too much. So I just want to darken the back. Not too much, but something like that, yeah. 
And as a small last little touch, maybe we can play a little bit with um um whoops effects. No, let's um color lookup. Let's just scroll here. I think we can scroll. Yeah, we can. Just add some nice contrast to it. This is just a default. I just picked one. Uh, default um, uh, lookup table built in in Photoshop. So I think it adds some nice touch to it. So yeah, and we can uh, we can crop this image now. Actually, I do want to keep the ratio. Can I can I do that, please? Yes. All right, something like that. Can we keep the rule of thirds? Right. So this image is finished for now. I think it looks pretty good.